गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू आवर टू डेज दैट इज द लास्ट डे ऑफ द ट्रेनिंग ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स रिसोर्स पर्सन डॉक्टर रफ्यूल अमीन लस्कर सर माई सेल्फ जकारिया अहमेद फील्ड एसिस्टेन्ट बायोटेक हब जोरहट एंड आई एम योर मडरेटर फर टूडे एंड इट्स माई प्लेजार टू वेलकाम अल हियर टू द हेन्ड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ऑन बायो इनफर्मेटिक्स अर्गेनाइज बै इन्स्टिट्यूशनल बायोटेक हब बहना कलेज जोरहट आसाम थैंक यू नाउ आई लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट मिस मल्लिका बरवा फील्ड एसिस्टेन्ट लैब एसिस्टेन्ट बहना कलेज बायोटेक हब टू इंट्रड्यूस आवर रिसोर्स पार्सन थैंक यू तो मिस मल्लिका बरवा Thank you so much, Ms. Malika Bora. Now I like to request our resource person, Dr. Rafiul Amin Laskar sir, to uh, start the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you uh, for this introduction. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, coordinator DBT Biotech Hub for giving me this opportunity uh, to be part of this uh, hands-on training program. organized by our very own dbt biotech hub so uh, good morning everyone so here we have around i think 15 16 participants so mostly about this workshop actually uh, we were discussing it earlier also so 
my presentation will be mostly related to your uh, graduation up to graduation syllabus and later on uh, we'll try some hands on training on this bioinformatics as it's a very vast as a whole this bioinformatics is, as a whole is very vast topic so we'll cover uh, the relevant topics only which are uh, useful or which will be useful for our uh, students and those who are specifically in graduation or masters and something like it and uh, i hope there are participants who already used bioinformatics tools as uh, we have some senior participants also so uh, that will also add up to our discussion later on uh, if i miss something or uh, like this so to start with uh, first i will share my slide actually for last few days uh, laptop was little bit disturbing so jakaria please confirm it's shared na so yes sir this here okay I lost the hope on my computer itself laptop. Uh, so now it's visible, na? So yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> the topic uh, for this discussion, which I chose, is um, molecular evolution unveiled, as I uh, titled it. Like it's uh, related to basically related to your uh, phylogenetic analysis, and before that phylo phylogenetic analysis we uh, will get some uh, basic information related to some uh, sequence alignment and normal databases and all those things so which will help us to finally uh, prepare these phylogenetic trees and all those things and later in the uh, training session in the afternoon session we'll use mega software for uh, that's why i use the mega term here so a mega insights into the tree of life so it's basically molecular evolution unveil mega insights into the tree of life so agenda for today which i took from the syllabus only so it's uh, a part of our bioinformatics syllabus for ug and pg also so it's like uh, sequence alignments which uh, we need or which is the basic thing in bioinformatics for any kind of bioinformatics we do alignments of the sequences and then we'll try some molecular phylogeny or molecular analysis of these uh, sequences aligned sequences for uh, getting some information out of it or any any evolutionary relationship on those sequences so uh, kind of like this so the first uh, thing is already it is uh, fifth day in this workshop so i hope everyone uh, already discussed lots of things about bioinformatics so it is basically related to gene genetics and genomics as we all know so uh, in bioinformatics it's basically bio and informatics we use because of this we use some technologies uh, from with the help of computer technology we can say that collect store analyze and disseminate biological data and information such as dna amino acid so basically this bioinformatics what we do is that we have dna and amino acid uh, sequences which is available and with those sequences we use this bioinformatics tools to get out some information which is basically uh, practically useful nah? so by seeing this dna and amino, amino acid sequences we just get some coding uh, coding sequences but when we use these sequences for uh, with the help of this computer technologies or uh, analyzing this data so we will get some information which is useful or which is meaningful you can say so basically this with the bioinformatics we get out some uh, meaningful data out of these sequences which we have then we have another term which is which will be used or which will which is very useful for our topic also today's topic also and phylogenetics so it is the basically evolutionary related piece nah? so with the help of bioinformatics uh, the most useful thing we can do is that we can get some evolutionary related relatedness about some species so how these different types of species are related evolutionary means ancestor or kind of uh, some kind of trees which uh, represents their uh, closeness genetic closeness or genetic uh, you can say divergence how different they are so as we know there are uh, biodiversity is available lots of biodiversity is available and it's our uh, nature only that we can connect those 
uh, individuals or species or uh, their evolutionary relationship so that we can get some meaningful data so that will be called as phylogenetics so suppose this is just as a sequence of evolution for some species so here you can see that this mouse human monkey lion cat so how this about 3 million years ago so it was a kind of yeah so presentation is on the first page oh but i already moved to this oh sir now it is third or fourth page page 5 yes sir now it's visible na yes sir wait uh, now it's visible na sir yes but like uh, sir can you make it full screen yeah this is the full screen only oh sir we are we have not uh, you are not seeing the full screen mod sir one minute okay what stopping now you are seeing full screen only no sir it's okay so you can continue wait let me share again now in my skin it is full skin only oh sir we have not seen the full skin but it's okay sir so you can move like this na uh, yes sir we are in page 6 okay yes, okay sir. so let's start with this introduction of alignments uh, introduction of sequence alignment so by definition or purpose it is the arrangement of dna or rna any kind of uh, biological data you can say it is uh, we all know that it, these are dna rna or protein or we can say this amino acid sequences so uh, this de by definition you can say this with the help of the sequence alignment we highlight the similarities or differences in uh, sequences of dna rna and amino acid na so why we are doing this what are the purpose of uh, aligning these sequences our purpose can be uh, of very uh, very as per our objectives but uh, to identify suppose homologous region so if there is some homology with the sequences because these sequences basically what we are talking may be sourced from different types of uh, species or different uh, organism so we will see some homologous region if it is available or evolutionary relationship if there are uh, regions which are similar uh, in the sequences so based on those similarity of sequences we can say they are evolutionary relation related or not or some understanding some functional impl implications so functional implications we can say that suppose uh, in uh, uh, microbiology or suppose in uh, diseases na so there are bacteria or some viruses or any kind of genome we can analyze to understand their functional aspects or how uh, this virulence or how they are causing the diseases what are the changes what are the mutations uh, uh, they have taken up because of which they become more virulent or something like that so this uh, sequence alignment is basic need of or it is the basic thing which we have which we have in our hand hands suppose this rna or dna or protein sequences so significance in bioinformatics because understanding genetic variation the most common thing we know that this biodiversity means the genetic variation na and our whole all kind of this genomic or genetic researches are basically trying to understand this uh, genetic variation why this genetic variation what are the reason what are the source from where this genetic variations are uh, uh, are basically driving this evolution so all these things are related to this sequence alignment with the help of this sequence alignment we can use this sequence aligned sequences to understand the genetic variation or 
we can predict protein structure and functions na so if you have some understanding of this evolutionary trend of uh, some kind of mutation in a genome so we can predict also the future uh, protein structure or functions which uh, because of this mutation or because of this changes in the sequences Uh, finally, the protein structure will also change. As we know that these proteins are already uh, connect, connected or governed by this uh, uh, DNA sequences or our genomic sequences. So, enable identification of homologous genes. Na? So, one thing, homologous genes and these similar genes, which we will discuss again also, I think in later slides, uh, there are <coughs> examples. But the thing is that the sim homologous genes and the similarity in the gene sequences are kind of uh, differences na there are uh, difference in the similarity or uh, you can say homologous genes so in this slide also because uh, it, it is not in the full screen because of which this uh, code go, gets overlapped but uh, <coughs> this uh, this is just a illustration of the matches mismatch insertion deletion na so if i uh, make it full screen so i hope It's coming in this presentation or not? Jagariya, sir. Yes. Or oh, it is same. So it is same. So you have to share the uh, entire screen. I think not the window. One minute. Because there are some slides which have uh, this kind of illustrations. So for that. Okay, we'll move forward. We'll discuss it with the other slide. Now it's normal slide, na? No? It's coming, na? It's normal slide. So basically, uh, this concept of uh, concept of alignment. So basically, this concept of alignment, which we are discussing here, is that uh, suppose you are aligning. some uh, sequences as it is a kind of complicated thing that dna rna sequences we are aligning but if we think it in simple way that suppose you are uh, matching two kind of languages suppose as i uh, uh, written up here suppose you are comparing english and hindi alphabets na or uh, if you are comparing assamese or bengali alphabets na so you can compare those alphabets or those languages and you can find out some relationships between the languages na? so it's a very basic thing so this the same thing applies with the biological sequences also so when we are saying that english and hindi so there may be lots of dissimilarities na the in the in the alphabets or in the uh, vocabulary or whatever we can say so there may be lots of differences between hindi and english so we can say that these are not some kind of there there is some missing relatedness or missing evolutionary trend or anything like this or it may be evolved in a different zone itself na the same way if we compare this assamese and bengali so here we can say that this assamese and bengali have lots of similarities as we all know there are some similarities between assamese so we can say that this assamese or bengali they originated from the same location or kind of something like that so the same things applies with the genetic sequences also or whatever the sequences we have in our hand biological sequences whether it is suppose dna sequence rna sequence or protein sequences so with this also you can apply the same concept that whether they are related or not with the help of sequence alignment so i hope you are getting the getting my point that this sequence alignment is the basic thing we have to do to do any kind of research with the help of this uh, bioinformatics na in in bioinformatics because uh, without aligning the sequences from different origins so you cannot uh, kind of uh, say how they are related or how they are different what are the differences or whatever your objectives no whatever the objectives of the research you are performing so again it allows the identification of shared evolutionary history so again and again we are uh, using the term or uh, coming with this evolutionary history or evolutionary relatedness so overall the whole idea of this alignment or whole idea of this sequence alignment is basically related with this evolutionary history or evolutionary relationship how they are connected with one another no so again you can identify some common patterns na if you are comparing many uh, sequences from different organisms or different any uh, 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 animals or different plants species 
so you will find some common patterns na, that uh, these uh, kind of this uh, species or this uh, plant species are related with one another more compared to them some other so it is kind of comparative analysis of our diversity which we have plant diversity or animal diversity or microbial diversity so it is basically uh, comparative analysis of this diversity with the help of this sequence alignment so if you uh, in general we can say that uh, this with the help of this uh, sequence alignment we can identify the ancestry na? ancestry means uh, how this uh, this species or this uh, organisms are basically originated na? so we can say it like that then we have this uh, critical uh, evolutionary relationship uh, critical understanding of this evolutionary relationships so next is uh, the slide i hope it's coming so it is basically related to this sequence alignment is important so the common points which we can say the predict of prediction of functions huh? so if you align the sequences so you can predict some kind of functions of the genes functions we know that this expression product which we can say that proteins huh? so the functions of proteins we can predict with the help of that then with the help of this sequence alignment we can use this alignment for database searching then gene find database i think already discussed lots uh, in previous uh, our uh, discussions in previous uh, days of this workshop and then we have gene finding sequence divergence sequence assembly so lots of thing we can do with this sequence alignment and then there are some sequence similarities because of this uh, what are the reasons for this sequence similarities we can again say there are uh, uh, different homology which are present homology means the common ancestor genes then homology can be orthologous or paralogous na? so different organisms homologous genes from different orga organisms or paralogous means within a species or within a organisms within a same uh, lineage there may be some kind of duplications of genes and because of this duplication you can again aligning those sequences and you can finding some similarity and dissimilarity that maybe comes under your paralogous which uh, we can say because of the gene duplication within the same organisms na? so that also generates homology or homologous sequences you can say then gene duplication na? one gene is duplicated in multiple copies so these things we already studied in our basic uh, genetic classes or basic our uh, graduation classes so we will not go into this further analogous homologous these things so these things are also already we studied that there may be some comparative study with the help with the in the evolution we already this will already uh, had a topic called evidence of evolution na? so with the in the evolutionary uh, history we need some ev evidences which though with the help of those evidence like fossils na? like fossils record so with the help of this fossils record we basically uh, give the evidences so that uh, these things are connected or this the organisms are connected like this so then we have causes for sequence dissimilarity which is most import, important aspect of this sequence alignment or we can say this bioinformatics and now so that why these sequences uh, how these sequences becomes dissimilar so if a specific gene which is responsible for specific function in suppose different plants or different species of plants so how they becomes dissimilar if they have the same genetic function or same gene function you can say so there may be some dissimilarity arises because of as we all know the most common cause or most common cause of any evolutionary uh, trend is mutations na? so mutations means any kind of nucleotide change when there may there are different topics or different types of mutation which we will not go into very in detail but uh, the thing is that there may be some insertions na? insertions of nucleotides or there may be some, some kind of deletion of some nucleotides there may be some nucleotides may be deleted and because of that we have dissimilarity in the sequences now although these sequences are from for the same gene in uh, in the same uh, different organisms or those organisms may be related with each other but because of this mutations insertion deletion or indel you can say insertion deletion both way so because of this uh, this dissimilarity arises and with the help of this sequence alignment we are basically uh, searching those similarities na? we are basically meaning uh, getting meaning out of those similarities how this dissimilarity can give us some meaning which with the help of those information meaning means the informations uh, with this informations can give information do with one another uh, in their evolutionary history 
then this this one again uh, it will show some overlapping because of uh, this uh, i cannot present it in a full screen uh, so it is basically comparative so if uh, there is a difference between if you see here if there is a difference in alignments of two sequences or kind of same similar sequences because of it may be point mutation now if there is point mutation alignment is very easy anyone can identify the differences na if there is some point mutation so if if we have two sequences of gene if i give two sequences of gene in our basic classrooms na classroom setups also in boards also if you write m adenine one and thymine sequencing and another sequence with anything so students or anyone will easily identify this point mutation what are the uh, sequences or where are the nucleotides which become changes na but if it is a addition deletion kind of thing na if the sequences are large and with this in the inside the those sequences there are some additions or deletions na means a stress of dna edited or stress of dna is deleted na so in that setup it is difficult to basically align those sequences na it will be not easier for us and this one this example is basically of short length but in real life we all know that gene sequences are large and to identify addition and deletion or stress of dna or stress of Uh, RNA or uh, protein sequences, amino acid sequences, which are deleted or added, it will be difficult for us uh, to identify it visually. Now, so with for that we need to align sequences with the help of some kind of uh, sequence alignment tools which we have. Now, so here comes the sequence alignment. So in our classroom setup, we usually give examples of these simple mutations or point mutations, which student can easily understand for our basic understanding. But if you see the second example here, you will see. Uh, that uh, this stresses of dna are missing and for that we need to align those sequences in a manner where maximum sequences or maximum sequences uh, maximum nucleotides get uh, match score now we can say that maximum sequences get maximum nucleotides of the sequence get match score this is an example just for example so in later in the hands on training we may try some kind of this uh, examples for our understanding but here if you say that if we are giving some scores to the alignment so suppose there is a plus 1 for if the nucleotide matches na mismatch if it is plus 0 plus 0 suppose uh, gap penalty suppose we have to provide minus 1 so these scores are basically um, as per your use means you can change it na so in gap pe gap penalty basically we use negative values in general so for mismatch scores also you can use negative values but in general uh, what we do this gap penalties are cannot be positive means na so otherwise this whole algorithm will uh, change so we'll see later uh, because we use some tools also for this na uh, so uh, in general so here if you see this alignment basically gives us the maximum scores and that's why we align these sequences like this the point here is that the gap which we gave here is because or uh, the the way we align the sequences because we get the highest score out of this alignment there may be different kind of alignment for the similar sequences means what we, uh, we i want to say is that if you have the same two sequences you can align those sequences in many way later i will show you the sequences may be aligned in many uh, different way but uh, to to get the best alignment or which alignment will be correct that will be depends on the score of that alignment now if you are getting highest score out of that alignment that means that alignment is the most possible or most uh, you can say correct correct we can uh, cannot say but we can predict na it is basically a prediction only so we can predict that this will be the best alignment possible for these sequences that is the point here so we'll move to next uh, slide one so here again we have this uh, type of alignment na what are the alignment now we are getting into the types of alignment or practical part out of it so we have pair wise uh, sequence alignment pair wise sequence alignment by name you can say that we we have two sequence and we will pair, we will uh, align those two sequences uh, whatever the best possible we have so for this we have this needleman owns and smith quarterman we i know you already know this names and types <coughs> but uh, the important thing here is basically this match and mismatch 
ना सो बेसिकली दिस निडलमैन ओन्स एंड स्मिथ द अदर नेम ऑफ दिस वन इज लोकल एंड ग्लोबल आई होप ऑल एवरी वन वेरी मच फेमिलियर विद दिस वर्ड्स लोकल अलाइनमेंट एंड ग्लोबल अलाइनमेंट सो बेसिकली वट वी आर टॉकिंग हेयर दैट विद द हेल्प ऑफ एल्बोरिदम्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ सम काइंड ऑफ कैलकुलेशन यू कैन से और कंप्यूटर बेस्ड कैलकुलेशन यू कैन डू हैंड्स ऑन ऑल्सो ऑन दिस इन पेन एंड पेपर सो विद दिस एल्गोरिदम लाइक Niederman owns which is which is for global alignment and Smith Waterman which is for local alignment. You can say so with this alignment we can uh, align the sequences or two sequences in a way that that is best fit for the uh, our understanding or best best fit for the evolutionary trend which we are observing here. So this pairwise sequence and I find diverse application found understanding of protein function to designing diagnostic tools. No, so these are the things. So there there there, there comes. Uh, Uh, there comes the important thing. We can develop some diagnostic tools also. How we will develop these diagnostic tools? We'll discuss that also. But the thing is that if you are aligning two sequences, suppose you have a uh, some kind of bacteria which is causing disease, and the previous version is the uh, before that mutation. If this bacteria is suppose uh, resistant to some kind of, uh, it is basically susceptible to some kind of antibiotic, and now this bacteria become resistant to that antibiotic. so if you compare the sequence of both this bacteria so you will get what are the gene sequences which get mutated because of which this become resistant to the antibiotic now that that kind of diagnostic tools also you can develop so then you have uh, applications identifying conserved domains detecting mutations studying sequence uh, this evolutions so here both dynamic programming uh, this Algorithm, programming, and algorithm. These terms are basically uh, the meaning uh, which is coming out of it. It is related to some kind of uh, computer thing or some kind of technological things. But the normal meaning out of it is that what we should understand is the model. Na? So basically, this computer or bioinformatics tools are giving some kind of models. Sup- suppose Nidelman owns or Smith Waterman models, and based on those models, they are basically predicting the best sequences. and the evolutionary trend so it is kind of model not kind of something uh, algorithm which is connected with uh, some kind of uh, this uh, computer things which is beyond our because uh, this bioinformatics basically what uh, the basic problem which i faced also it is related to suppose uh, some kind of uh, languages are required c++ and python and all those things and these things are basically uh, what i feel uh, during my Uh, this research uh, so there are some kind of things or some part which we can do without this uh, knowledge of this uh, high end uh, this uh, computer related things so we can use basic our uh, uh, sequence analysis and this phylogenetic tree preparation without knowing any kind of this languages na computer languages if you know the computer languages we can create the commands and all those things now that model we can develop that is a different thing but those models which are already developed we can use those models directly to produce some kind of meaningful data or meaningful information out of these sequences so here uh, if you uh, if you can see this nidelman owns algorithm which is called as global alignment now so this global and local alignment again it is not about some kind of global and local now it is not uh, it is Uh, the meaning is uh, completely different the meaning is that suppose you have a sequence of two sequences suppose you have a two long sequence so the global means if you are comparing whole sequence as a as as a unit uh, if you are comparing the whole sequence means you have two sequence and if you are comparing the whole sequence as a unit then you can say it, you are your alignment is global alignment because you are comparing the whole stress of the dna sequence to which you have suppose you have two gene sequences and if you are comparing the whole uh, sequence as as a unit so that will be give you a global alignment means there may be some gaps mismatch uh, there may be some uh, this matching score there may be penalty so everything will be there uh, in the whole uh, this things and then you will use some kind of scoring scheme that already i uh, uh, shown you some uh, slides that scoring match mismatch and gap there may be three possibilities na uh, when you are whenever you are comparing two sequences so there are basically three uh, possibilities we have that the sequences matches the sequences mismatches or there may be some gap so against this match mismatch and gap we will give some 
uh, scores of, uh, to align the sequences. Then we have initialized with gap penalty. So there are differences between global and local alignment. So whenever you are aligning, that also we will do in the hands-on training. Uh, that whenever you are aligning two sequences for global alignment, uh, that, that time you will start with gap penalties. Uh, your box or matrix will be uh, matrix will be the first row of the matrix will be with the uh, start with the gap penalties that is minus one minus two minus three some kind of uh, something like that then you have this algorithm be be uh, uh, behavior so if you uh, consider the algorithm be behavior in needleman wounds or global alignment it is spans the entire length which i discussed already both sequence will be uh, checked entire length uh, but uh, the whole length will be checked for similarities and dissimilarities and then application is comparing entire sequence. So as per your, this is again your as per, as per your requirement. Suppose you have a sequence two genes, so two, two, two genes, and if you want to compare the whole gene or whole stress of the gene, then you will use the global alignment. And if you are concerned about some kind, some part of the gene, which is basically showing the similarity, the maximum similarity, that part you can use local alignment for that in the next slide if you come. Uh, for that part, you can use uh, this local alignment. So, in the local alignment, basically, it is most similar subsequences. Local means we are not comparing the whole sequences. Out of the whole sequence, you are comparing basically the only the subsequence. Means a small part of the DNA which is showing maximum score or maximum match. Now, that is that is the point here. That in the whole sequence, suppose you have two sequences. So out of, uh, in the whole sequence, if some part or some subsequence is showing maximum similarity, that is, uh, that is, uh, will, that uh, based on that alignment or that span of DNA only, the sequence will be aligned, and that alignment will be called as local alignment. Uh, so it is basically uh, there is a difference, uh, this a simple difference between this uh, local and global alignment. And again, here also we will use some scoring system. So as far as scoring system. It is same, whether you are comparing local alignment or uh, this global alignment, you will use the same scores, that is mismatch, match and gap scores. But the point here is that in the local alignment, you will give the match score because you are looking for some subsequence which is matching, exactly matching with one another. So that means you will give match score only, that is one, one, one or uh, whatever the positive value you are uh, considering for a mass score. Now, again here, uh, the matrix you will prepare, that will be covered in the hands-on training, the matrix you will uh, prepare here uh, is basically starts with zero. So if you remember in lo global alignment, we use gap penalties as our initialized matrix values. Means if you start aligning two sequences for global alignment, the first row which we will uh, uh, place as zero and then after zero we will give the gap penalties that is minus one minus two minus three and in case of this local alignment our matrix initial rows x and y axis will be zero 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 now all the zeros we will consider not the gap penalties so then again this uh, algorithm behavior here higher similar high highest similarity within the sequence so the behavior of the algorithm algorithm you just remember algorithm means the model. So Smith and Waterman, whatever the model they develop, in that model, the basic uh, idea or basic behavior of this model will be that it will look for highest similarity within the sequence. Now, whatever the sequence we have, it will look for the highest similarity. Now, the, the subsequence which show, which showing the highest similarity. And again, application wise, it is based on your objective. So if you are looking for some kind of uh, uh, local similarities or part or sequence which are similar in both uh, in a large uh, DNA or large uh, RNA sequence or protein sequence maybe, uh, if you are uh, looking for some stress of DNA which is showing maximum similarity, for that you can use this. Uh, then the next, so... I hope this slide is visible. Yes. So it is basically a type of, here you can say this global and local alignment. Na? So it is clearly visible. Na? So in this case, we have two sequence because 
this global and local alignment is a part of pairwise sequence alignment that we have to remember because we are not talking about multiple sequence alignment here we are talking about pairwise sequence alignment that means at a time we will consider only two sequence now whatever the source of that sequence but we will consider only two sequence and when we are aligning this two sequence with the global alignment that means we will uh, look for similarity within the sequence within the whole sequence now within the whole span of sequence like uh, you can see here that uh, in global alignment there will be many gaps many mismatch and many uh, things will be there but in local alignment the difference is that in the same sequence the region which is showing largest similarity will consider only that part now other part is not important for local alignment local alignment only look for the subsequence which is showing maximum or highest similarity that is the difference between global alignment and the local alignment so global alignment doesn't means that our sequences we have to source from globally now sometimes this is a misconception uh, which i faced in our classrooms uh, from the students that they are confused about that it is global alignment that means the sequences should be from the global or large pool of uh, genomes and local alignment means we are collecting the sequences from locally so that is not the case it is just about the uh, sequence of dna or the span of dna the stress of dna which we are aligning if you are aligning the whole stress of dna that dna length may be anything now that sequence length may be anything it may be uh, 500 or uh, 100 or 1000 nucleotide long whatever it may be so whatever it may be, it may be but the point here is that whenever you start aligning in global alignment you will align whole sequence as a unit in local alignment you will look for some local similarities that is the difference i hope it is clear and again there is a term which you all know blast na? so blast means is again it is a algorithm only so here this needleman wounds where we will discuss about this global alignment and local alignment the difference, uh, these alignments or these models, you can say, these algorithms or these models, uh, local or global, can be done with the help of your simple pen and paper. Now, and there is some other kind of algorithms or other kind of alignment algorithms or models available. And the one of the most common, which we all know, is the BLAST, na, local alignment search tool, which is available already in the our NCBI database as a as a extension so you can click the blast and it will directly uh, align the sequence or look for the similarity so that is a part of your algorithm so this is not uh, basically we will not discuss this blast as in detail here but i have used this uh, blast here because that i want to show you just the similarity of this blast na? similarity of blast so blast is nothing but it is kind of algorithm only which is aligning two sequences so blast is also aligning two sequences just it is different uh, difference with local and global alignment that blast is basically a algorithm which is heuristic means it will predict the best alignment out of all the data all the sequences which we have in the database so the in the database suppose we have many sequences again this blast is, is basically comparing your sequence with the database but it will again follow the pairwise sequences uh, pairwise means it will sequence your uh, your uh, suppose sequence with the sequences in uh, available in the database but one by one means your sequence with one sequence then again sequence then again sequence so it will go with like uh, go on with uh, go on like this uh, whatever the sequences you will provide for blasting now. so most use algorithm in bioinformatics is this blast now it is a basically fast approximate alignment so here it is written now. so approximate alignment so in lower case if it is uh, visible so suppose for sequence g l k f a just for example suppose you have g l k f a so it will look for triplets in the database means your sequence g l k f a will be read by this blast as a g l k then l k f then k f a means uh, i hope you are getting the point that this uh, whole sequence whatever the sequence you will provide suppose your own sequence which you uh, uh, sequenced from some uh, source from some animals or plants no? uh, or the sequences which are already available in the database the, diff the thing here is that it will use your sequence as a triplet and it will go on uh, your whole sequence locally so that's why we use the blast is a local alignment 
so it will use stress of your or subsequence of your complete sequence one by one and then it will match this subsequence with the sequences which are available in the database that is the point here hope it's clear then for this summary we already uh, discussed so this summary here the term which we use this uh, matrix filling and traceback procedure so if you see in the first point now both algorithm use dynamic programming and share similarities in terms of matrix filling and traceback procedure so this matrix filling and traceback procedure i will just show you so this one again is basically for presentation but because it is not present in the full so that's why it is showing some problem so the point here is that if you see this example it is basically a global alignment so in this global alignment suppose you have two sequence a a t g g c c t c and again you have a c g g c t c so in this uh, alignment basically we use mismatch as a minus 3 gap as a minus 4 so if you align the best alignment which is basically it is uh, basically this one actually so if you see is it moving one by one or as a whole chakariya yes, sir as a whole oh uh, actually it is the same problem here also so i have prepared this slide actually explaining the uh, <coughs> how you will fill up this matrix means each numbers in this matrix uh, basically you have to fill one by one so again it is showing as a whole so we'll discuss just directly so wait pointers are not available Okay, the thing here is that if you see, uh, if you want to align any two sequences as a global alignment, so you have to prepare this kind of matrix. First thing, so how you will start with the matrix? You will place one gap just before the sequences. Suppose in the above sequence, if you see A C G G C T C, so before this sequence we have placed a gap here, and in same way in this side also. in the left side also you we have give one gap after that gap we have placed the sequence a t g g c c t c now this zero the first uh, zero which is present in the first cell this zero will start with the zero anyway we have to start with the zero whatever the matrix we are using global alignment or local alignment will start with zero and then if you see the first uh, two line or first line so zero after zero we have placed minus 4 this minus 4 is for gap if you see our gap penalty or gap uh, score is minus 4 so we have give minus 4 then again we added the minus 4 that means minus 8 then we added minus 4 again so 12 16 -20 -24 -20 -20 -20 -20 likewise here also minus 4 minus 8 minus 12 minus 16 so likewise up to minus 32 so this thing you have to prepare first before doing this Uh, global alignment you have to prepare this much na that you have to place the sequences above and the, in the side then you have to place zero in the corner cell then you have to add this uh, gap penalty and you have to prepare the first lines in both side and then if you see the first uh, one which is present uh, diagonally below the zero that one is basically because this capital a and capital a or adenine adenine you can say this af in both the sequences matches with one another that's why we placed one because one is the match score we used here right? so for our, for this uh, analysis we use one as a match score so this one is because this a and a matches with one another and again this minus 2 is because you have to c for the match or mismatch suppose this c and t it's a mismatch so that means our score is minus 3 and you have to add the diagonal number now that is the uh, rule here we'll discuss in the hands on training again 
but here if you try to understand that this minus 2 comes from minus 3 because of mismatch plus 1 which is diagonally above and it will give you minus 2. So likewise we will go and finally from the last corner now from the last corner we will start trace backing up to the 0. Trace back means you have to pre uh, prepare or you have to give line from the last corner to the top zero how you will move move by giving the highest score means you you have to look for suppose in our lower corner we have minus one so from minus one we have above minus two minus five and minus six the highest is minus two so we will go with the minus two then again this minus two have minus three minus four so we will go with the minus three then one then zero one so we'll discuss in the next uh, this theory or uh, practical part also so so if you observe the differences in global alignment and local alignment the only difference here is that we'll give zero in the above cell now in the earlier case we use this gap penalties but here if you see the first two uh, first lines now first lines or first cells of the uh, sentence of the cells of the matrix so you will see 0 0 0 0 and in this side left side also 0 0 0 0 so in case of global alignment you will give gap penalties or you will add gap penalties one by one but in case of local alignment you will give 0 0 0 in both side in upside and left side and then you will again start diagonally but in this case you will not start directly you will look for similarity so in this case in our uh, these two <coughs> sequences which we are using for our understanding so here there are two similarities one is your ctc ctc which is because of 3 2 1 and again 3 2 1 because of ggc and ggc so this way you can you can uh, use this uh, global alignment and local alignment so we'll try to understand it during our hands on because it will take time here then you have multiple sequence alignment. It is completely different from local uh, local alignment. So, uh, sorry, pairwise alignment. So the, the, in pairwise alignment, basically, we compare two sequences only. But in multiple sequence alignment, we will use multiple means more than three, three or more than three sequences simultaneously. So if you can run more than three or four or five or whatever it may be, sequences simultaneously, that alignment will be called as multiple sequence alignment. So in this case, we have multiple sequence alignment. So if you, it is very simple to understand that when you are uh, doing something with multiple sequence, that means you will need more uh, computer-based tools. No? So you will need more softwares, more something like that, because on in pen and paper sequencing multiple sequence, uh, sorry, aligning multiple sequences together will be a difficult ta task. No? So for that, we have some algorithms or some tools which is very much known or present in our normal biomedical syllabus which is your classical w na? so that basically tackles these challenges na? as as it is written here because with the help of this classical w you can align multiple sequence simultaneously and because it is a computer software so it will do it by its own and if you give it it will give you the final alignment which is the best alignment the most suitable or uh, most uh, uh, most uh, high or most aligned sequences which can give you the highest score or maximum number of match you can say the best score will be the maximum number of matches because this match score is basically positive uh, mismatch is zero gap penalty is minus one so that means the highest score is directly proportional to the highest or maximum matches uh, so this cluster w is basically uh, basically will basically align the multiple sequences in a way or simultaneously in a way that it will give you the maximum score or maximum probable score uh, because overall whole system is running on probability only then this msa are invaluable for protein families because again this cluster w will use in the uh, mega software during our hands-on training uh, for our understanding means how it is, it is basically working uh, cluster w but the thing here is that in case of pairwise sequence alignment we use global alignment and local alignment and this global and local alignment can be done with a simple pen and paper by using model or algorithm developed by our uh, scientists uh, so researchers so with those models you can uh, align pairwise sequences or two sequences 
with the help of those models in a pen on paper but in this case when you are using multiple sequences or large sequences na large sequences for that you need some kind of softwares which are basically running on the models of local and uh, this uh, uh, global alignment na because this plastic w is doing nothing it is also using same algorithm or same models but since we are doing uh, this sequence alignment or multiple sequence alignment simultaneously that's why there is a some kind of softwares which is basically uh, give you output or the best aligned sequences which we will see in the uh, hands uh, training part na then you have uh, this cluster w again uh, data about it is used in bioinformatics software tool for multiple sequence alignment of nucleic acid protein you all know advantage basically its speed user friendly and suitable for large data set na? so why we are using this cluster w because we are uh, basically aligning multiple sequences and since we are aligning multiple sequences it will be difficult to use uh, your uh, normal methods or normal ways so you will use this cluster w which will give you with one click it will align all your sequences na with one click it will align all your sequences it may be 10 sequences or 20 sequences or 1000 sequences all the sequences will be aligned by cluster w with a click only because it will, it has algorithm which is already uh, coded in its software directly so limitation is sensitive to input order may not handle highly divergent sequence well so if you see here suppose you have provided it is uh, the, the 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 output or the correctness of this cluster w alignment depends on your input now basically we are providing the sequences na so whatever the sequence you provide that sequence based on that sequence only cluster w align those sequences means if you are providing some imaginary sequences cluster w will don't know that so it will align that sequence also and you will say that no it's uh, not from real world example so how it align this sequence so it's kind of like this so it is basically an algorithm which depends on your input only and if you are uh, providing some very diverse sequence diverse sequence suppose means from uh, very distantly related species so that also in that type also that type of sequences also uh, this cluster w have some limitations because it uh, it, it 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 fails to recognize the uh, similar sequences or sub sequences within the very diverse or very distantly related species so this may be some kind of uh, i say it is a limitation but it depends na it depends on your input so it is basically working on your command only so whatever the input you will provide that input will be provided as a output so here you can say again these are some uh, points related to this cluster w so it is multiple sequence basically purpose the purpose wise it is used for multiple sequence analysis in application wise analysis of similarities and differences we all know this na the cluster w then algorithm it use progressive alignment algorithm this progressive alignment algorithm is basically related to the alignment of two sequences progressively progressively means uh, we can say that if you uh, we can say that the system which is running inside this cluster w it will align two sequences in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a, at a time but this two sequence align this two sequence with other sequence third sequence again simultaneously suppose a align with b again a align with c again a align with d so likewise again b align with d b align so it is basically progressively and it will run from your first nucleotide to the last nucleotide one by one na so it will not go directly in your sequences directly so it will check first sequence then again third next triplet then next triplet then next triplet uh, likewise as i explained in uh, this fasta also then it is input is based on your fasta file basically we will use today also we will use some fasta files so you will use this fasta formats na huh? fasta formats if you use so that fasta format is accepted by cluster means you cannot uh, uh, you can say copy paste any sequence any any sequence of genes in any format na huh? so we basically use the sequences which are saved in the fasta format that the that, that is the point na huh? and output will be uh, output format will be and your sequence will be aligned na huh? that those aligned sequence what you will do with those aligned sequence that is your part but this cluster w will just align your sequence after the alignment you will use those aligned sequence for production of trees or production of some kind of functional aspect or studying some functional aspect or identifying some uh, 
uh, mutations in the in the in the in the aligned sequences that will be the second part which is not related to the cluster w cluster w will only align your sequences and the output alignment which is saved in uh, dot mass file like it's mass file so that mass file which is a aligned sequence file will be used with the help of mega we will do today so we'll use those uh, cluster w output output file means the aligned multiple sequence file for production of suppose evolutionary tree uh, so you can use those uh, saved or output file for your own objective or own purpose but the thing here is that cluster w will align your multiple sequences after the alignment the sequence will be saved as a uh, mass file and this mass file can be used for many types of uh, research activities in bioinformatics then you have uh, the software software and implementation there are some softwares which are already there which we will use uh, for uh, for doing cluster cluster w then <coughs> there are uh, regular updates which are coming then these are some uh, basically uh, features or you can say or characteristics which uh, of this cluster w and there are uh, uh, some user friendly interface so overall the cluster w why uh, in generally we use this cluster w because the interface is basic very much It's connected, na? Or we lost the connection. So yes, it is connected. Which should be present in the pool. Uh, it is not moving right now. It is just showing you as a whole slide. But still, if you try to understand it, that we have three sequences. Suppose we are talking about this multiple sequence. Na? So multiple sequence. Suppose you have A, B, C. A sequence is your A, B, C. B sequence is your A, B, C. C sequence is your A, C. So if you see that these three sequences can be aligned in multiple ways. Na? Suppose in first case, this A and B and C is showing as a outgroup or C is showing not related or distantly related to the A, B. And in the next case, again, this A and C are showing closely related. B is showing as a distance related. And in the third case or third way, it is showing A and C, uh, sorry, B and C are related A as a distance group. So if you see here, all these three alignments are basically correct. Na? But the thing is that which alignment will be most probable or most correct that will depends on the scores or the best fit or best alignment which this uh, cluster W will give you. No. So in this case, suppose if you see the third alignment, so in the third alignment, uh, most of the nucleotide sequence are basically aligned in a way that suppose A is aligned in ABC and again T, which is thymine, is again aligned in ABC. So because we are aligning here two sequences, two nucleotide, A and T, so we are getting more matches here compared to the A and B, na? case A and B. In case A, we have matched all the S, and in case B, again, we have uh, matches all the S, and we have provided a gap, and because of that gap, we have missed uh, this matching of thymine in A and B. But in case of third, in the third group, if you see, here we have matched A and T and there are some gaps we have introduced. So with this help, we have more matches. So kind of like this means there may be wrong alignment because of your uh, 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 presentation, no? because of your how you, you want to present it. No? So based on that, there may be some uh, wrong alignment. So what happens when a wrong alignment is there? So you will have, have to see for the scores or see for the best alignment, which is 
giving out of the uh, out of your software so if you if you uh, see this so in this case the bc is basically now which will be the more accurate i think that will be the bc are related and c is the output na so out of this in the third third case so in third case this a is basically matches in all the three and t is also matches in all the three so one thing you have to understand that in multiple alignment there may be some problem because when you are aligning two sequences so a single match is okay na so just like in the first case in this photograph in a and b this thymine thymine matches so that means it's okay capita adenine adenine matches thymine thymine matches but if you are aligning multiple sequences a b c together then you will see that in the c in the first case c here a is matches but t is not matching now that's the problem when you are matching multiple sequences or aligning multiple sequences you have to look for maximum alignment or maximum matches out of those sequences so again we will not go into detail of this uh, uh, pem and blossom because uh, mostly which we will talk today about our uh, dna sequences or gene sequences but again pem and blossoms are also algorithm na so these also give some scores to the protein sequences or we can say amino acid sequences na and again you have to understand na later on i hope in the discussion section someone will also highlight so that uh, there are some differences na in our basic understanding also there are some differences of aligning two amino acid sequence and two gene sequence i would say na so if you are aligning two dna sequences and if you are aligning two amino acid sequence there is a very difference in the alignment na very difference in the alignment means the way you align both the sequence will be very much different from one another na because when you are aligning two gene sequences the gene sequences are basically made up of only four nucleotide adenine one and thymine cytosine but in case of aligning amino acids so amino acids are basically made up of uh, uh, around uh, 20 amino acids na uh, so this 20 versus 4 so if you are aligning two dna or two rna so you are dealing with four nucleotides which are basically repeated one by one but in case of amino acid here you have 20 amino sorry in case of protein sequence here you have 20 amino acids which are basically uh, repeating one after another in a random way so that also you have to understand that in case of this uh, protein sequence analysis or protein align sequence alignment so there may be the algorithm is completely different from the algorithm of gene sequence alignment and that is the point here so pem and blossom basically these algorithms are basically dealing with or the way this pem and blossom will score give score it is basically uh, assign scores to the uh this uh, amino acid sequence based on maximum likelihood or maximum uh, possibilities so we'll see in the next slide so this protein sequence will uh, pem blossom will discuss not discuss in much because in our hands on training or in the later section we'll use only the gene sequences or we'll do multiple sequence alignment on the gene only so this pem and uh, blossom you all know the difference is percent accepted mutation and in place of blocks of amino acid substitution matrix so in both these cases if you see the first one is that why we are saying it's accepted mutation because suppose if you are having suppose two sequence of amino acids and suppose uh, some algorithm is trying to align both the sequences so it will see look for this mutations na it's common that there will be some amino acid which show mismatch and those mismatch amino acid can be considered as mutations which because of which there may be some functional problem with the protein but the point here is that whenever it is aligning two sequence so it will look for accepted maximum accepted mutation because uh, the mutation with the mutation with which the protein will not lost its function completely means you can say na so it is not become out of uh, use or out of context so that much it will consider na percentage of accepted mutation whatever the percentage of mutation it will accept to align two sequences and same way it will uh, in blossom it will use substitutions na so if there are some substitutions of amino acids so those amino acid substitution will be considered getting late then will not discuss this because we have time constraint also so here just for example for your understanding so suppose 
we discussed i discussed already this suppose uh, uh, help of which i am asking emergence of antibiotic resistance suppose how you will use now what are the if you if you consider what are the uses of this alignment that suppose you want to know how this bacteria which becomes antibiotic resistant now, suppose you have a bacteria and against that bacteria you have some antibiotics which is completely working or doing uh, doing fine with the bacteria but after some time or after some uh, uh, time you are seeing that this bacteria develop resistance so how you will identify the resistance or how you will develop a new antibiotic which is again uh, not resistant to not resistant by this bacteria then you have to align the new resistant bacteria with this predecessor and when you are aligned those bacteria you will identify some mutations or some mismatch and based on that mismatch you can identify the sequences because of which this bacteria become resistant and the product of those genes can be used to develop a new antibiotic which is again uh, against which this bacteria again becomes susceptible uh, so likewise you can use uh, this functional uh, in functional biology or functional aspect for this uh, sequence alignment uh, then you have uh, this methods of uh, phylogeny uh, this methods of phylogeny so again i am saying that suppose uh, this uh, a sequence alignment so suppose you have a aligned sequence now you have already aligned the sequence with the help of pairwise alignment or multiple sequence alignment now you have sequence aligned with you na no, with in your hand so now how what you will do with the sequence which is aligned so because uh, by seeing the sequence you will not identify uh, or you will not get any meaning out of those aligned sequence na no, because it's a large sequence which are aligned and now present in your software or whatever the software you use for cluster w or now it is present suppose it is present in your uh, laptop na no? so now you have a sequence you are saying all the sequences are aligned it is good it is perfect but the point is that to get the meaning out of this aligned sequence you will have to use some other aspects and suppose you have to you have to do uh, suppose phylogeny phylogeny means that how the sequences are related with each another you have to you can do a evolutionary check uh, or evolutionary related relatedness check out of this aligned sequences and find out that how likely or how much these sequences are aligned with each other or how much these sequences are related to each other because each sequences are sourced from different species or different organisms so based on this sequence you can say that organisms is related to one another the point here is that with the help of this Uh, al aligned sequence you can represent this sequence as a representation of the specific species and normally we use later on we will discuss on that that normally we we generally use the sequence of dna which is basically uh, you can say uh, uh, mostly conserved sequences or mostly uh, conserved because any sequence you cannot use for sequence alignment because these sequences when you are using those sequences to represent na, as a representative of that organisms so and for evolutionary study so we'll use mostly conserved sequences means those sequences which are showing very less mutation or very less change or less evolution you can say na, if some specific sequences are evolved so much that its uh, expression products is now completely different from one another na, suppose two species have two genes and suppose in one species this uh, this gene is so much mutated or so much evolved during the evolution phase of evolution and now the product of this expression product of this gene is completely different na so from this ancestor or from his uh, related species so we will not use those sequences because that will give you a diverse sequence and there will be some problem with the alignment also because two sequences are completely different that means it will not align also completely uh, uh, correctly so we will use conserved sequence from different species because when we use conserved sequences those sequences will align properly and give you some match or some mismatch and gaps na and based on that mismatch and gaps we will uh, use those mismatch and gap for our tree production or tree uh, development so that we can understand the relatedness na so the point which uh, i am saying here that we will use the sequences which are kind of related or less mutated or less evolved or you can in other word you can say the conserved sequences which sequences are basically in our evolution not changed much na if some sequences are completely changed so you cannot align those two sequences na and if you cannot align those two sequences you cannot uh, 
produce the tree or uh, uh, this related tree out of it. Then uh, for phylogenetic method, we use distance based method. These are again from your syllabus, maximum likelihood method, uh, joint and joining. So these things we use. So phylo phylogenetic methods, as it is there in the slides, so it will, we already discussed, so it will show your evolutionary relationship. The two things are evolutionary related or not, you can use with this. So two main approach, now basically we use two main approach to do this. Phylogeny, suppose two organisms from the same species or two species from the same genus. So if you, if you, if you are considering two genes from species which are from the same genus, or uh, two species from the two genus, but from the family. So they will be called as uh, this genetic distance. Uh, they will be called as distance. And if you are considering two sequences which are based on their amino acid and nucleotide sequence differences, that will be your called as your across the species. Now uh, you will not considering from a related species, but across the species, if you are considering uh, DNA and RNA sequences, so that will be called as character based method. So what about the method you use? distance-based method or character-based method, it will give you a very informative tree. Now, the, these trees are very informative, phylogenetic tree, you will say. So, this phylogenetic tree are very informative and very useful because the same sequences which you have, now, the aligned sequences, later on you will see, this aligned sequences which you have suddenly becomes very informative and very clear that based on, based on this tree, you can clearly identify that these plants or these species are more closely related, these species are more distance related, these are from the same origin, these are from the different origin, these are not related to it, so something like that. So, then softwares, these all topics are basically uh, also there our, in our uh, syllabus also. So, so uh, the software which we use basically uh, there are many softwares nowadays but the most uh, commonly used and uh, easily easily we can use will be mega na. so mega is basically a very uh, useful tool to do phylogenetic analysis uh, any kind of phylogenetic analysis or you can do some mutation analysis also mutation analysis means suppose you have uh, you are considering two sequences which are uh, basically uh, basically you have developed as a mutation product means suppose you have a plant in control group and again you have a plant which you have induced some kind of mutation in this plant now with the help of some kind of chemical mutagens now, and then you identify those mutations or you can uh, extract the dna and then sequence the dna and after the sequencing you will get the gene sequence and that gene sequence you have to uh, uh, registered or put into the database and then you can use those sequences to so it is connected now huh? so with the help of this mega you can easily detect uh, these things. So basically these tools perform computations, generate, generate trees, evaluate their statistical robustness, guidings, reliable interpretation of evolutionary relationship. Again, comparative analysis helps choose the most suitable tool for specific database and research topics or research questions. So whatever the, your objectives, so based on objective, you have to choose your tool or choose your software with that you will do or you will uh, pick this phylogenetic analysis. Na? Again, uh, then consistency again is very important for phylogenetic analysis. So most of the times there is a big challenges of consistency because the whatever the trees are developed, so we have to uh, have a tree which is reliable. Uh, we have to have confidence on the tree which is generated out of the sequences because as I said, the aligned sequences are very much there, but you cannot identify or you cannot understand anything out of that sequence now, when they are shown as aligned. But when you develop trees out of it, it is very easy to understand. But again, the problem here is that this tree which is generated out of the aligned sequences must be reliable. And there are some problems 
or there may be some challenges which you will face to develop uh, these trees because when you are uh, dealing with new sequences so for our training purpose we will use the normal sequences or the sequences which is already very much known to everyone but if you are dealing with some new kind of sequences which you have generated with the help of mutation or some kind of chemical mutagenesis or physical mutagenesis so those mutations or those genes for those mutations and for those genes you have to be very careful that how you will handle them because the genetic analysis will give you three and when you are presenting those three or relatedness of the gene or distanceness of the gene or divergence you have induced in your uh, population with the help of mutation so that divergence shown in the tree much must, must match in your population also uh, in your traits also so reconstructing tree is not a without challenge factors in complete data horizontal gene transfer convergent evolution so these are the some kind of problems you will face in your uh, sequence alignment now whenever you are aligning the sequences these are some kind of problems so again the point here is that since we are using software now so you are using a robust software which is very good very uh, user friendly so the only thing you have to careful about that your input now your sequence so whatever the sequence you are providing that sequence is very important so if you are providing a good sequence that means it will give you a good uh, output or correct output or reliable output so you have to identify or understand your sequence first before starting with this analysis that I, the, the sequences are correct or correctly uh, uh, taken from the database suppose you are using ncby database so in the ncby database there are lots of sequences so how to retrieve or how to collect data or sequences from ncby database and save those sequences as a faster format that is very important nah? so if you are if you are, if you are that's why this uh, before doing this uh, we have to be expert on uh, this ncby database or data collection or basic statistical understanding then understanding this consistency reliable then data quality model assumption and choice of phylogenetic method these three things will affect your consistency then we have importance we all know that what is the importance of molecular phylogeny so it is basically give you evolutionary history of species now that is very important because uh, the most interesting or most important thing or most important question in front of all the scientists all the biological means scientists which are dealing with biological things so there there is a there is a big question that what is the evolutionary history of every species or so there are every day you are seeing that new species are identified na new species are found somewhere or new plants are found somewhere so this is a big question of understanding the evolutionary history of species all the species all the diversity which we have na because in uh, in northeast if you see specifically so in northeast we have lots of diversity and it is it is very important to connect all the diversity to give a meaningful understanding of the diversity of northeast na so if you have, don't have any connection or relatedness or uh, uh, this understanding of this whole diversity so in that case this molecular phylogeny will be very much helpful because morphological data will not give you or cannot give you the exact picture of evolutionary relationship because morphological data may be sometimes because of this region or because of that region but the molecular data which have, that's why it is molecular phylogeny so earlier we know that we do morphological with the help of morphological or visual data we uh, classification na uh, linear classification and all those things we already did based on this uh, normal morphological classification uh, so here we are not talking about morphological we are using with or dealing with molecular data and this molecular data for analyzing or understanding this molecular data we need this bar then i will conclude because we already reached time so again here we is a case study which is related to your sars cov 19 so in the, the again we can discuss uh, that this cov 19 variant or many mutations we have observed na? there are many mutations which are arises or mutant which are arises one after another we have vaccines against one mutant or again some mutants will develop so all these things are again related to your or all these things can be solved with the help of this bioinformatics related so last thing i 
want to clarify here that rooted and unrooted because we will use this rooted and unrooted uh, uh, rooted and unrooted trees for our hands on training because uh, this root and unroot there are two types of phylogenetic root tree we already know that root and unrooted tree but the point here is that rooted means there is a common ancestor whenever we are saying root that means a common ancestor and branches in the rooted tree are showing evolutionary relationship Na, the whatever the branches we have in the rooted tree that will show you evolutionary relationship and it show the direction of evolution and length of the branches is related to your amount of evolutionary change so these things are very important the branch and the length of the branch Na, again unrooted is basically giving you less information if you have a if you developed a phylogenetic tree which is unrooted that means it is it is only showing you evolutionary relationship it is not giving you any data of common ancestors it is not giving you any data of direction now which way this evolution is going on and all those things will be missing in case of your unrooted trees so that is very important the rooted and unrooted so whenever you have developed or prepared a phylogenetic tree so try to make that if it is unrooted if it is unrooted try to convert it into a rooted tree because rooted phylogenetic tree will only give you the actual picture that is common ancestor what is the common ancestor what is the evolutionary relationship what is the direction of evolution and the amount of evolutionary change all those points are very important for our any evolutionary tree na so uh, that that we have to be careful so if you will develop a unrooted today also we will uh, discuss about this rooted and unrooted and last thing is will use two type of these are for your practical purpose we can discuss in later in the uh, later session also but these are for your practical purpose that will use two type of tree construction today which is your neighbor joining and maximum likelihood so any way you can go to prepare your tree so that we will again can be discussed in the later session i'll skip all these slides and then only thing last thing that this mega software just i have to introduce it in this session only because in the later section we will use it so mega software is basically a is basically full form is molecular evolutionary genetic analysis and with this molecular evolutionary genetic analysis we will uh, we will do the phylogenetic tree analysis or phylogenetic analysis i think it's up to 12 na session is or 12 30 12 sir up to 12 na so okay we will Okay. Whatever left, we can discuss in the later session. So, these are something related to your uh, mega software. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. Ma'am, ask her. I think there are no queries, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your meaningful session. And we will meet again at 1:30 p.m. <coughs> for the practical session. Thank you so much, sir.